Renee, please share with our audience your professional journey. How did you make that pivot from corporate life to really becoming an expert stylist? Well, you know, it's, it started, I've always loved fashion and style. I have, uh, from a little girl, something I did with my mom, we always went to pageants and mod and fashion shows. And really, I just loved it. And something that I'd done throughout university, but I really never knew that there I could get paid to help people to look mm-hmm. good or to get dressed. That was just never something talked about in our family or even growing up. Mm-hmm. And so I just, you know, went to school, got my degree and to get a good job. And so I had the career, was very successful, you know, I reached the top of my mountain. I just decided that, hey, this is the wrong mountain. I really wanted to do something that I was excited about, where I felt I could pour into, into women. And it really helped them to stand up and own their space. And I knew when I looked good, when I put myself together, when I was feeling great, I was able to walk into these rooms because at my level, I was the only woman in my role, only woman, definitely only the black woman. And so it gave me that confidence to know that I could ask for more. I could negotiate for more. I could, you know, I, I felt I owned my space. Mm. And so I, I just decided, I said, you know what, this is, there has to be more to life. And I really wanted to, give my bet on me, right? I've, I've been very successful in corporate and done very well, made lots of money for these companies. I said, I'm going to bet on me. And so I decided to take a leap of faith and here I am. I love that. My bet, business. bet on you. I love that. Yes. And so when you first set out, what, what field did you study and where, what field were you in professionally within corporate? Yes. So uh, my degree is in biology. I went mm-hmm. to Penn State University. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming from Jamaica. Don't mm-hmm. ask long story. Just <laughs> heard the name and applied and got in. So ended up. So one day I was on the beach, the next oh day I was on a snowstorm. <laughs> literally. Oh gosh. Oh that my was goodness. it. That was my, my welcome to my Penn. Welcome. Yeah, that was my welcome. So my degree is biology. And so I, I worked in um pharma. My job was with um I started off in pharmaceuticals, or that's mm-hmm. where I, that's my whole career, pharmaceutical mm-hmm. sales and then into sales leadership. All right. And so what makes having executive presence so important for those with executive ambitions? Well, you know, if we talk about our style, right, Mm -hmm. and how we show up, our style is, I say, it's one of our biggest communication tools. It is how we tell the world who we are. It's how we introduce ourselves to the world. It is how people get to know us. And so that is the first thing that people see. And so it's really important. And when you think about it, the data, the data tells us that within a few seconds, people make decisions about us. Mm-hmm. And so if we, if we understand that, and if we know that, and I see it as our style being the packaging of our personal brand, mm-hmm. right? It is the first thing that people see. So, so before people, I get pushed back sometimes with people will say, uh, yeah, but I'm a great employee. I'm a good worker. I do great work. I'm bottom line. I cut costs, all of those things. And, you know, those are, that's, those are really valid points. I get that. But before you can dazzle us with your skill and your wit, people see you, mm-hmm. right? And people, when they see you, when they see, it, it communicates something, mm-hmm. right? And it's an emotion. It's that feeling that people get when they work with you, when they've seen you. And so if you have um, executive ambitions, you people want to see you in that role. People want to see you dressed as if that role is just a normal progression for you, right? Mm -hmm. So make it easy for the higher up or whoever's making that decision, make it easy for them to say, oh yeah, she fits in. She's Mm -hmm. a a natural fit. It's almost like an unconscious passively, others start seeing you in that capacity. And so, yeah. So what have you witnessed to be some common missteps in particular that young professionals make when it comes time to their personal style? I think common missteps for sure. People just don't give it any importance. They don't think it's important. They think that they can advance their careers. They think that just on merit. They think that if I work hard, if I do a good job, then I'll move up. And you know that's just not the case. We see that. I mean, there are other things, of course, right? Your network, your, your relationships, mentors, all of that. But also it's imp- what is important is how you are showing up. How are you communicating the work that you're doing? How are you being visible? 
how how especially now in our virtual space mm. are you opting out by turning your cameras off or are you being visible online are you showing up you know in clothing that really that are great colors that that project well online so that people remember you so that you're memorable for the right reasons mm -hmm. all of those things are important as you are progressing your career as you're progressing your personal brand because your personal brand is always there it's always working for you whether you know it or not what do you think about it your brand is what people know of you when you you're not even there that that's your reputation really mm -hmm. and so when you package your brand just and when I, let me say that you control the narrative you control mm -hmm. how you want people to receive you you control the message that you want to send and so you know since you control that make it so that Tell the story that you want to tell. Mm -hmm. really just tell well, your story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been interesting as I heard it said a few years back now that um, from a company standpoint, that's a very general statement, not specific yeah. to any one organization. But it was like, oh, yes, as a company, we want new employees. We want you to come and bring your authentic self. But silently, it was like, as long as I'm comfortable with your right. authentic, authenticity, exactly. Exactly. right? That was exactly. the message that was then being delivered. So they're saying one thing, yet doing another. And mm -hmm. um, yes, there are there are bits of evidence that there is a shift on that front. And uh, let's hopefully continue with yes. truly hopefully. authenticity being a full representation of self. So to personal mm -hmm. style, how does one even begin? right? You have, you're in adulthood, you make choices on your wardrobe. How do you begin to build a professional wardrobe that is reflective of the style you want to convey? I think the first step and how I work with clients as well is to get really clear about who you are, right? Clarity is so important. Who are you? How do you want to show up? What is important to you? What kinds of words do you want to be associated with you and your brand? Is it that you're thorough, approachable, or authoritative, whatever it is. So I think being really clear on who you are really is that first step. And then understanding also your body and your body shape. What looks great on your body? What looks great on a mannequin may not look great on you because your weight is in a different place. And so the clothing and the fabric won't lay on you the same way. Right. Look at the fabrics that you choose. Right. So if you have more curves and you want fabric that may have, have a little bit more stretch mm -hmm. in it so that it moves with your curves. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things for sure that I work with clients on in terms of what to look for, depending on their body shape, what silhouettes are going to accentuate their assets the best so mm -hmm. that they feel confident. They're not constantly tugging and pulling at. Right. So the first thing is to really think about who you are, how you want to show up, and then be very clear on your body shape and what styles um, will work best. And I have a free guide as well on my website that people can avail themselves to free dressing your body shape that they can get that's really helpful. And that's a really good point just to remind our listeners that at the show notes for today's episode at tuesdayswithcoachmo.com forward slash podcast. I'm going to make sure to include all that valuable and rich content, Renee, that you have available for the audience. And so it sounds like you get started with some clarity, right? What I've also come to discover is sometimes one's clarity of who they think they are and what their style is and what their body type may be different than what <laughs> an outside person such as an expert style is like yourself, yeah. what you yeah. see. Yeah. I think also, well, <laughs> that's tough, <laughs> right? If you, if you think, cause we see ourselves all the time, right? We see ourselves. And then sometimes, as you said, that's such a great, great uh, point is when you see pictures of ourselves, we're like, Oh my goodness, when did this happen? Um, but, you know, also, you know, maybe I, I help clients, I tell clients to look at things that inspire you. Maybe, you know, look at Pinterest, people whose style you like, people who, who are style icons or movie stars or celebrities who, that you like and start to kind of curate a board, mm -hmm. curate some, or even a, in a magazine and take pictures of things that you really like and think about what it is about that, that you like. Is it mm -hmm. the flow, flowiness of how it, it flows on the body? Is it that it's more tailored, whatever those things are. And again, keep a track of those and then compare that with your current wardrobe. Is, are they, is it out of alignment? Does, mm -hmm. what, does what you own in your closet 
look like what you've been curating or is it completely different? And that's okay, right? Because over time, we evolve and change and mature and so does our style. Our style mm. should change and evolve with us. We're not, we shouldn't be stuck in a, okay, I am at this type and this is what I'm going to be forever. No, styles mm. change and we like different things or, or our tastes change. And so just to be, to embrace that, right? And be able to move with it and love and, and, and honor every stage of life and say, okay, I'm no longer a size six, but I'm a fabulous size 10. Uh-huh right? You know, it just prompted um, the thought at listening to you say that, Renee, is what if someone isn't really comfortable with a really sur- suggested direction for their style? And they are just very conservative, right? Because I imagine just like as I think about like investment or investment, financial investment strategies, there's a certain degree of risk tolerance. (laughs) And so even when it comes to your style, like a degree of risk Mm -hmm. tolerance, like, wow, if I do wear that, yes, I will accent, um, you know, how I'm built, my body type. I love the color. I love the feel. It's representative of where I want to go. And man, I just think it's going to be too many eyes on me because get too much attention, yeah. Yeah. you know? And yeah. cause I'm just not that, that kind of a sometimes. risk taker. So what happens in that case? That happens sometimes. And you know, I always say our style is, is an inside job. The way we mm-hmm. show up and what we put out in the world starts, it's an inside job. So I do, even though I'm a, I'm a stylist, you may, people just may think I just pick nice clothes or cute outfits, but we do a lot of work, right? We spend time I spend time with clients really talking about those limiting beliefs. Why do you think you don't, you can't wear that color? And then what's wrong if somebody looks at you? So we do, we do do some work. We have, I go through visualizations. I have women write out what's the, how do they see their next level selves? What do, how do they want to show up? And so we do some work there and really try to challenge those beliefs. Why do you think you can't wear that? Because some depict whatever body part you want. Mm-hmm. Oh, my ears are too big. I can't wear that. My knees are too fat. I can't wear that. Mm-hmm. And so, and then when you think about and peel it back, you know, somebody, when they were, were a child, some person told them they couldn't wear that. And so that's, that's mm-hmm. become their truth. Mm-hmm. And it has followed them throughout their life. And we're like, well, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Right. Who said that's true? Mm-hmm. So a lot of it starts, not a lot of it. A, it is a, a lot of it is mental. Mm-hmm. It's that an job. It's, it's it's an inside job, right? We start with challenging those limiting beliefs. And when I work, I'm not forcing clients or pushing clients, but I am challenging them mm-hmm. to think about, hmm, really? What if we tried this, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and style confidence, confidence in, in your style and how you show up. It's just that confidence in anything. I always say it starts with the mindset and really believing and believing that you deserve it, you can do it. Uh, and then also by action. Mm-hmm. That's its second, second pillar of confidence. And so taking that action, right, to build that confidence muscle can be small steps, but at least you keep trying it, you keep doing it, and it, it, then you, it becomes a part of you. And along those lines, in terms of even test driving, you know, a, a completely different style or something new and different that you may deem risky, as I do with clients on their leadership competencies when they're looking to Uh, try out a new approach. I'm like, okay, well, how can you create a low risk Mm -hmm. space for trying it out? So as with wardrobe, uh, you know, what was coming up for me as I'm listening to you is, well, why not try wearing that and go to the grocery store? If you're a church goer, if you're at the church, go to a community meeting, do something other than, because going to the workplace, it may be too high of a risk. High risk, yeah. If you're trying something for the first time, you may think it's too high of a risk in the workplace. So go try it you know, for just wear yeah. this outfit for a couple of hours and you go to the grocery store, or church or community right. group or and something. And I also did that during the pandemic. I, when I was working with clients, I'd say, hey, it's a perfect opportunity to put some different outfits together. Try some new looks, right? You're at home, you're working at home, you still want to show up, but try this top with this bottom that you hadn't thought of putting together. Try, you know, just try different things. And then you either create new fantastic outfits you never thought of, or you can get rid of, or you've gotten rid of stuff that no longer serves you, mm-hmm. right? So I love that. The, no, the low risk is low absolutely risk. a great place to start. And so if someone's committed to take steps toward, you know, developing their personal style, what's an ideal range of, you know, key pieces to have in one's wardrobe? And then I'm thinking... What if you're on a budget? So 
What are your mm-hmm. thoughts? Sure. So in a few things, you know, sometimes you'll see all these lists from in magazines or wherever about the key pieces that you must have. And I just don't subscribe to that because I think it really varies depending on your lifestyle, right? right. You need to build your wardrobe really depending on your lifestyle. How much time do you spend? You know, are you traveling? I mean, let's say, right? But after we were able to, are you traveling a lot for work? Are you a stay at home mom? Are you, you know, are you work? Are you just working from home? Are you an entrepreneur? I know that this is really based to young entrepreneurs as they're building. So you really have mm-hmm. to first thing think about your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And if we're talking about professionals, then I think some basic pieces or some key pieces to have. I like a great blazer because mm-hmm. even if you're showing up virtually, you know, if you just have a t-shirt on, if you throw a blazer on top, that elevates your look right away, right? So a blazer, maybe since you're working from home, it may not be a very structured blazer, but maybe something that has stretch. So it moves with you and it's more comfortable. So I like a blazer. I like uh, something professional, a white button down shirt, I think Mm -hmm. is awesome to have. You can dress that up. You can dress that down under a dress, under a blazer, skirt, uh, endless options for a white button down shirt. Um, Pair tailored black pants, nice fitting black pants that work with your body shape. Dark denim, you can dress that up or down, put a blazer on top. Uh, work for casual Fridays if, if that's allowed. Um, what else? Some nice camis are great layering pieces as well. And then some, I always like, you know, a little shoe that have, has, a, has a pointed to whether it's flat or a little pump, because uh-huh. that just makes it a little bit more, that just elevates your look. Whether it's flat or a pump, it, a pointed toe is much more elevating than around. Than the toe. round look that yeah. really yeah, came about. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the white shirt and I instantly thought like, oh, dreadful. I am just not a fan of the whole like ironing and, you know, yes, and the, yeah. the wash. I'm like, I am such a wash and wear type of person or dry clean. And, yeah, wear. Yeah. Um, yeah, and when yeah, I think of yeah. like a white shirt, it, it seems simple in concept, right? A nice quality white shirt and it could be all over the place. Do you want some with a little spandex? So it has a little yes. really versus a hundred percent cotton. Or? Exactly. There, the options are, there's so many, right? You have those that have stretch, right? So especially if you have a, a heavier chest, Mm-hmm. Right, you may, and then with a heavier chest, you may not want. Oh, yeah, okay. So you can have the one that's stretch because it will stretch over the, your bust area. But you can also mm-hmm. wear a cami under that, or maybe your white shirt, depending on the lifestyle that you and the work that you do. Maybe it's not the structured white shirt. Maybe more of a white blouse, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that, and the fabric is looser, and it's not that it's not that structured, so it's looser and it moves with you. Still button down, but you know that's how we we think about fabric. So you really want to think about the key is your lifestyle. How are you spending mm-hmm. your time? Mm-hmm. And then you build your pieces uh, around that. And you talk about budget. Important when you're building your budget, sorry, when you're building your wardrobe and you're really conscious of your budget, again, think about first thing I, I tell my clients is shop your closet. Go in your closet. Many of us have tons of stuff in our closet, some great gems that we've forgotten about because there's just so much stuff. <laughs> shop your closet and look at what you have. Make a list. That's another key point. Make a list of some of the gaps that you have in the closet. Maybe your black pant doesn't fit as well anymore or your black skirt. So you need, a, you, need, you need to add that to your list. When you have a list and you're more deliberate and intentional, then when you go shopping, you're not distracted by shiny objects where everything looks exciting and you want to pick up stuff, right? The idea really for a functional wardrobe is to choose pieces that you can create outfits from. Right? It's not about just picking one off pieces that you love. It's about say, if you buy it, if you're thinking of a piece, how many ways can I wear this? And I always recommend clients mm-hmm. uh, to have at least three ways, different ways that they can wear a piece. If it doesn't pass the three-way test, it doesn't make it to your closet. Mm-hmm. So everything needs to earn the right to be there. So first we start in your closet, then we make a list. We understand our body shape because you're going to buy things that suit you. And then think about the colors that work great for you, especially, you know, we're virtual now and people are showing up more like, even when we go back to quote unquote in real life or in, in person events, some of us are already there, <laughs> but we're still going to be utilizing the virtual platform, I'm sure, because it's cheaper and it's easier for lots of organizations. So, you know, think about the colors that you wear, how they brighten your face. And, you know, so those things are key mm-hmm. to keep on budget, I'd say. And so that's where I want to go next in terms of really unpacking how you work in a one-on-one, um, you know, relationship with individuals who come to you, um, before making that pivot, I just have a, I'm curious, 
I was a fan, believe it or not, of the good old shoulder pads, not the really big okay. shoulder pads, but some shoulder pad lift. I've actually seen some yeah. shoulder padding coming back. Is it coming That's back? That's right. And I love it. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Well, see, and I'm tall, right? So I'm five yeah. nine, and that just helps to, I think, just to yeah. give more of a It gives you more definition, permanent. right? Yeah. So if you're slim, especially, it gives you, a, it widens our press yes. and it gives you some shape. And I looked yeah. at my shoulder pad um, suit jackets, I remember in my corporate days, and I kind of felt like when I put that on, I was in my, started to get in my zone for being See? in my corporate suit, yeah. right? It's like an ar armor. Right? It a really clothing. is. Yeah. Yes. And you wear, you know, uniforms for a reason. And I yeah. think having, even if it's casual, professional, whatever the scope is for you, knowing that those pieces are for work for you in your expertise. I just yeah. kind of, that's how I've been yeah. rolling. And I'm glad to hear you say yeah. that. Yeah. Well, shoulder pads are coming back to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, and so take us through how you onboard someone, someone reaches out to you wanting help. Sure. Yes. Awesome. So reach out to me and usually we'll start with a you know, initial call just to kind of understand what they're looking for um what their what their needs are and then i speak about my services and how i can help them determine if we're a good fit then if we if they decide to move together <laughs> move sorry if we just if they decide to move move along so mm -hmm. we I start with a style discovery call so i send a questionnaire style questionnaire to my new client and i ask you know questions about their style you know how what are their style words? What do they want it to be? How are they feeling? What do they like to wear, not wear? What colors are they like? So all kinds of questions for me to get a good understanding of their style and their goal. Because usually when they're coming to me, they're, well, obviously they want to change something. So what do they want to change? How do they want to feel? So we understand, I understand that from their questionnaire. And then we get on a call, a Zoom call. And then I go through the questionnaire with them because writing is one thing, but when we have that conversation, so many, so much more comes out mm -hmm. and I really get a good feeling of their personality because your style is not just, okay, what fits your body shape, but it's also about your personality mm -hmm. and how we can use the clothing to really enhance that. So we go through the questionnaire, I'm chatting about their style, getting a good understanding of that. And then from our discussion, I'll put a mood board together. And they, they can also, I'll put a mood board together and I share that with them and we go back and forth. So it's really a partnership. We were doing this together, put a mood board together of what I think would work great. We talk about, I talked to her about her body shape, bring images of what that would look like um, when we're working to attenuate her assets in a mood board. Uh, and then when she signs off and agrees, then I have a virtual platform that all of my clients uh, use and it's a virtual closet. Mm -hmm. So I'll go shopping for them and um, find pieces that support their goals and their lifestyle, put that in their closet. They can also upload pieces that they'd like to, for me to work with. And then they have the closet, they look and they, once they sign off, and then I create a lookbook and put their, put all the looks together for them if they want more corporate. So I'll put together, and I work in modules where I put certain pieces together so that they can have tons of variety and variability within these modules. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. They have their, uh, their closet, their lookbook is made and it also can be an app on their phone. So it's easy in the morning to say, okay, what can I wear today? And then a picture is ready and they are good to go. Yeah. And then I also complete the service with a PDF with a summary of all of everything that we covered, their body shape, their style words and all of that. So it's a really, a really supportive relationship that really takes them on a journey from on their style, from being um, confused and overwhelmed to confident and I say killing it, right? Where their style is <laughs> for them. I love that, confident yeah. and killing it. Um, yeah. What do you yeah. find as some common challenges that your clients, and I heard you reference her a couple of times. Do you work exclusively with females? Uh, mostly females. I've started working a little bit with men now because mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've approached me on LinkedIn and which mm -hmm. is fine. Uh, but yes, it's mostly, I most work mostly with uh, female clients. And so Renee, what are some of the common challenges you find amongst your clients? Usually people have tons of clothes and nothing to wear. That's one of the main complaints <laughs> that they feel, they feel overwhelmed. You know, I have a, I have a so much clothes, but nothing, I don't like anything, nothing fits. 
you know, lots of stuff I got from my mother-in-law or my sister, what have you, and they just cannot put a, a nice outfit together. That's a big one, right? Mm-hmm. Because people, as I, as I kind of mentioned before, people think that, okay, if they have a, a new opportunity or a new job or a new event, they need to go shop. Which before, instead of really thinking about, okay, what am I trying to do here? Can I create an outfit? And when they shop, they'll buy a one piece that they like, but it doesn't go with anything else. So they have a closet filled with one pieces and not a closet filled with outfits. Mm. And that's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because you're now reminding me of a recent podcast guest on the topic of decluttering. And she's talking about, you know, because so many individuals in particular, she starts with the closet because people just kind of accumulate and accumulate over years. And it does kind of make me wonder like, "Hmm, I wonder if there's a framework to, you know, how often should you really do a, you know, a cleanup when you look inside these, your closet and clothes have been there forever. And some are just sentimental, right? I remember I spent all my first paycheck on that outfit. So like I'm keeping it, but it's out of style. It doesn't, but why are you keeping it? Yeah. Right. Exactly. It no longer serves you. It served you so well then. And you're so excited about it, but if it doesn't serve you and I, I say this all the time, our closet is prime real estate. Right. So mm-hmm. everything that's in the closet really needs to earn the right to be there. Mm-hmm. It, it has to it has to pay their dues. Right. It has to have a use. You can't just have stuff taking up space. Yeah. No. Yeah. So nice. <laughs> so as we're preparing to draw to toward a close, I'm interested in just learning from you. One of your client like success stories. What was the journey there? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I had a client. She's an attorney and um she was just, she was just kind of opting out, right? She just did not feel herself, did not feel good, and just didn't, didn't want to show up. But then she, it got to a point where she knew, gosh, she had to, right? She was starting or she was going to branch off and start her own business. And so she had to show up. And this was even when we were in the middle of COVID. And so she reached out because she said, you know, she just wants to, she wants to feel good again. She wants to get her mojo back. She really wants to feel like, her image and when she's out networking meeting new clients that her image really speaks to who she is as a, as a successful attorney mm-hmm. so we started the process and we worked together and i was able to really understand who she was at her core and how she wanted to show up and how she mo- was most comfortable because when you're most comfortable that is when you glow that's when you're in your power not trying to fit and, and be someone else so i was able to create you know, outfits using what some of the pieces that she had and that she liked, find new pieces that really gave her some more color, added life, had that spunk and put it together in, as I mentioned before, in her lookbook. And my goodness, she left a testimonial from that. She just felt so like like she was herself again, right? She got her zhuzh back. She was out there networking and out there talking to people, meeting people. And she just felt alive. So that was really, really so awesome to see that transformation from just opting out to now being a a very active participant in her life. Nice, really nice. At what period of time, Renee, do is it typical that you're working with someone from when they first reach Um, out to you to they're off on their own? It kind of depends on 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 the cadence of them and like when I respond, when I send things, how long it takes to respond. But I'd say maybe. A couple, a few weeks, maybe three, two, between two, three, four weeks or so, mm-hmm. you know, is usually how long it takes. Yeah, maybe that's probably three, three to four weeks. Okay, on, on average. average. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, before we go, and I so appreciate okay. you being here and absolutely going to share with the audience ways to uh, get in touch with you. And if they aren't already following you on LinkedIn, you just really add fire on LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> Renee is on point. She's doing it, which uh, is why I reached you. out to you thank to be you. Um, on our, on our thank show. You. So I have a fun question for you before we close. Right. And so this is that best on the spot answer for you, right? And the question is, suppose you were attending a costume party tonight. What or whom would you want to be? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Who would I want to be? Mm. Oprah. Oh, and how would you show up as Oprah at a costume party? I would show up hair, big hair. 
uh-huh. hair done, um, dress in a, in a fabulous, I can see her now that when she accepts her wedding, a fabulous designer gown, mm-hmm. um, her glasses, just just looking fabulous. I, I, I love how she um, how she's styled into, you know, owning her body, owning her shape mm-hmm. and wearing pieces that really accentuate her body and makes her feel confident. So it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely a fabulous long gown, hair that's big and out there, uh-huh. classic makeup. And I've got to ask, would you have a microphone so that you can walk around and interview people? I don't think so. No. <laughs> That's great. All right, Renee, thanks so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Monique. It was great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure. Hold on. That's a wrap for this episode of Tuesdays with Coach Mo. Showing up here tells me you're willing to invest in yourself and your career. Get additional resources at TuesdaysWithCoachMo.com. Please subscribe and leave a review. I'd love to get your feedback. Till next time, this is Coach Mo signing off. Tuesdays with Coach Mo.